Hey guys, so it's here bringing you another video and a welcome to another episode of Spectating Challenger. So today we're watching Olaf and it's on, it's Diamond Prox, an ex-professional. He might still be a professional, but for like a team that I don't know who. Um, but yeah, we're highlighting him, one, because he's obviously a very good jungler, but two, as you guys know, I'm picking up jungle again, whether it be my main role or my second role. I am playing a lot of it at the moment just to kind of pick up the role a lot. And if you guys watch like my first or second episode uh, of the recent Rush to Diamond series, I was rattling off some names of like junglers I want to play. And I was like, you know, hey, Lee Sin, um, Kha'Zix maybe, blah, blah, blah. And Olaf was also one of those champions. Um, so I think he's incredibly good. And I think he's also underrated. He's got decent dragon control. He can solo dragons quite well as, a, as an individual. Um, so yeah, I, I think he's fun. I, and he's also fun to play. He's a running champion, which some people will be like, Huz, you don't like running champions. He's a bit different. Like he's a running champion that is actually a lot harder to pull off than others, but he has a mechanic that enables him to pull stuff off, which obviously is his ultimate. Meanwhile, level one crazy fight happening. Nice kill by Diamond Prox. Olaf also in trouble. I'm sorry. Alistair dies by that little auto attack after he flashes. Olaf gets ignited. Will manage to live for now. A bit more damage coming out on the Echo with a double axe to finish off the fight. And then straight away. No way, dude. Is he going to try and take this blue? Yup. Wow. So Diamond Prox, if you guys weren't aware, was in the height of when Russian League of Legends really reigned supreme. For a decent... Here's a smite war. He does get it. Russian League uh, of Legends was actually very good in, I want to say, season... Oh my god, this aggression is insane. Um, very good in, like, season 3-ish. Um, M5 or Gambit. They were called both of the, the those names at one stage or another. Um, they were very good. They were beating Koreans quite often, and that's when, you know, the height of Korean League of Legends was too. And Diamond Prox was the jungler of the team at that time. So obviously a very good League of Legends player. And he was always known to be playing incredibly aggressive. And you can just see there, capitalizes on the level 1 and steals the enemy blue. Who, by the way, is also an Echo. Who obviously is a spell casting, more or less, jungler. Who is very heavily reliant on having that blue buff. Especially before he gets the jungle item complete, which gives the mana regen, I think. Um, so just to remind everybody, Season 10, preseason. Jungle did get changed somewhat, that XP once again has been changed, that what they did was equalize the sides. So the last few months, etc., one side of the jungle gave more XP than the other. If I'm not mistaken, this side of the jungle gave more, I think. Um, and that's why a lot of people were avoiding doing the Gromp. They have recently kind of equalized it all. So no matter what side you start, you'll be able to get level three. Now you can see what Diamond Prox has done. He's ignored the Krugs. He did a kind of full clear apart from that. Why? Krugs takes a while to do and he obviously doesn't want to give the Echo a chance to steal this blue buff. He wants to deny it. So yeah, just does a kind of fast clear to get his way here. We'll then do a scuttle crab. And by the way, let me know what you guys think. But I really like the new look of red and blue buff. It's less distracting because it's not around the actual champion like mid section it's on the floor i think it looks very very clean gank potentially coming in obviously akali no summoners from that level one would imagine oh nice axe lovely axe actually would imagine the akali has got flashy wow does get the kill though with an auto attack oriana Diamond Prox himself doesn't have flash, sorry, I didn't realize. So he gets one Scuttle Crab, now gets himself a assist, and will go for the other Scuttle Crab. So, so far, this has been a very dominant jungle performance already from Diamond Prox. You can see the difference between the two junglers. He's about to be, well, he's over double farm already, nearly triple farm the Echo, has three buffs, Echo has one, and Olaf has been involved in a kill and got both scuttle crabs so yeah like so far this has been already very one-sided uh, another thing worth mentioning about the jungle and again this is where like obviously if you are wanting the jungle you need to know this stuff uh, and even if you don't jungle you should know this stuff too if you see <clears throat> one jungler being at a massive advantage compared to another jungler now in preseason, yeah you should expect that basically in the old b before um pre-season there used to be a catch-up mechanic of xp for junglers when you had a jungle item and if you're behind in xp in comparison to the enemy you got bonus xp to catch up that's been removed so there is no catch-up mechanic now for junglers therefore are they really doing this dive to a maokai um therefore if you get behind as a jungler you're only going to get more and more and more behind 
Um, and that is also why I feel jungling straight to the dragon. Why I feel jungle is 100% the most important role in the game for a couple reasons. One, you're seeing it here, dragons. Dragons obviously are the priority of the game right now. Uh, they give your team the biggest strength over even Baron nowadays. Uh, secondly, a good jungler gets ahead in XP and just continues getting ahead. Uh, and obviously, <coughs> a jungler is the, is the lane that's affecting all the other lanes too. So... By far, I think jungle is the strongest lane, hence why I've now officially kind of picked it back up. Is going for a potential gank. Kali could be in trouble. Oriana level 6 waiting, being patient with her ultimate. Olaf makes his way in. Akali no energy. Free kill coming in. Oriana picks that up. Olaf very happy. Most likely going to be helping to push this out. Actually doesn't. He knows there's a ward there, by the way, because he looked at it. But uh, he's just going to continue the um, farming. <clears throat> so again, very dominant performance. He's even going warrior. Warrior Olaf is fine. Cinderhawk Olaf is also fine, by the way. Uh, it just depends what you're doing and how well you're doing in the game. It's a situational buy, basically, for Olaf. If you're having a good game, if you're looking that, oh, I'm getting ahead, and especially with current jungle, like, I am so far ahead of the Echo, he can never fight me, I can kill him, Warrior is 100% what you want. Oh, I'm behind in this game? Well, then you want Cinderhawk. Oh, lovely Nautilus. Lovely Nautilus Q. Uh, obviously a UOL player. Meanwhile, Lucian does get it. Double kill does go down. Eh, I'd probably still say worth. Akali in trouble getting ganked. Um, will go down in the end. Also worth no noting, Dark Harvest Echo Jungle. Not entirely convinced that's what is good on Echo. Because um, Dark Harvest is obviously... It's a great summoner, kind of. But it takes so long to get you strength. Um, especially, like, the stronger you are in the early game as a jungler, the more pressure you have on the map the more likely you can do dragons. So I actually don't think Echo Jungle is going to be good at all because you have zero dragon pressure, obviously. Um, meanwhile, going for a bit of a gank right now, looking for the Olaf, gets queued. They're going to be in trouble here, the Nautilus. He's just going to get booted into the tower, I would imagine. Alistair looking aggressive for the Olaf and the, the Nautilus does get kind of killed because of the overstay by Diamond Prox. Like, oh, Nautilus should have just left. Um, Diamond Prox, I think, did have ultimate, so he could have maybe just ulted, ran away. Um, and yeah, farming will continue. So, again, key lessons that we've had in these spectates, especially watching junglers. We will mention them again, just in case you haven't watched previous episodes. Um, no waste of time. So, if you're someone that jungles and you are, you know, waiting in a bush for 10, 15, 20 seconds, meanwhile, Lucian is 2v1ing. Uh, if you're someone that does wait in bushes for a while, you are playing jungle basically wrong. Uh, also, you know, Ezreal, some people have already said to me, what what rune is Ezreal going to go? This one's doing Conqueror. I did have a look, and yes, I'm not a big thing of, like, win rates mean that much, but a sudden a sudden win rate drop or increase does show there's a change in the champion. Ezreal had a slightly negative win rate, I believe, before the patch at about 49% win rate, so not dominant at all, um, but his win rate went down to 43% with Kleptomancy removal. Um, so yeah, obviously that's going to hurt Ezreal a lot. We, we knew that, but you know, again, Riot changes the game for the masses and the, the bulk of champions. Yeah, like Ezreal suffers because there's no kleptomancy, but Riot can't not do changes just because Ezreal exists. Big teleport play happening, both top laners in the area, one mid laner roams, one doesn't, so Orianna is just chilling in mid. While the Akali does move, Lucian can't get too evolved because he's got no mana. Maokai is just going to get killed, so unfortunate for him. And yeah, so arguably you could say if Orianna roamed with her ultimate, that could have gone well, but she just didn't move. She even has teleport, by the way, so I'd actually say that's pretty bad from the Orianna, just not really looking to help. Uh, obviously, that was badly timed, though, for blue team because Olaf was going back, etc. Um, but yeah, so the ipso facto, if your champion gets nerfed and because of a change that Riot is doing... Riot, obviously, yes, there probably was a conversation when they're like, we're going to remove Klepto. Oh, what about Ezreal? I'm sure it came up. Meanwhile, lovely kill. Random Orianna ult. I'm sure it came up of like, oh, we're removing Kleptomancy. Who uses that? Oh, Ezreal uses it. Kale, Gangplank, Alawi. Yeah, it's going to affect those champions. But those champions have shown signs of being unhealthy with Kleptomancy at one stage or another. Um, and really, is it worth having a rune that in roughly four or five champions use so I, I i think it's fine to remove it i i do think the rune that they've replaced it with is also kind of pointless i don't see a benefit of anybody taking that rune um probably some chinese player 
or some EU player will come out and just prove me wrong. Meanwhile, a fight did happen. Don't know who got that. It hasn't come up yet. I uh, do believe Olaf got it because the Echo didn't pick it up. Uh, so yes, Olaf did win the Smite War, as you'd expect. Echo, again, I have no idea why he's taking this fight. He's delaying, you know, that flash sometimes would look a bit weird, but he was just delaying for uh, his team to get there. So he survives, the Olaf dies, and now the Orianna's in trouble. This could be okay, though. Unfortunately, again, Orianna whiffed her ultimate earlier. If she had her ultimate, they'd be able to clean this, but they will get the kill. Infernal is up, so I would imagine what we're going to see with Olaf spawning in six seconds, he's going to run straight to Infernal. That's my bet. Hang on, we'll pause the video. Place your bets now, ladies and gentlemen. Whether you type it in the comments or whether you just say it in your head, say it out loud. What is he going to do? My bet is he's going to run straight to Infernal. Here we go. Am I right? No, don't run up. Oh, he's go are you going the right way? He's running that way. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's my guess. Uh, sorry, I'm going to crack open a drink. Sugar-free monster. I haven't had a monster in months. It's a sugar-free one, but yeah. Ooh. Prefer Red Bull. Um, the store didn't have any Red Bull today. Sugar free. Oh, here we go. What's he doing? Use the Rift mid, then the dragon. Rift mid, then dragon. Oh, no. Go to dragon, you bum. All right, double kill. Enemy team. Uh, Carly doing a decent amount of damage. Lovely ultimate by Oriana. Akali going... Uh, look at the damage, dude. Like, that's a nerfed champion by a buttload, and she still basically one-shots, and she's 2v1-ing. No one can ever say that that's a healthy champion. When it's in the hands of a good player, and yes, I only deem good Akali players probably master and above, the, the Akalis that I even I play against aren't that good. They're annoying, but they're not that good. In the hands of a challenger player, it's stupid. It's just dumb. It's just stupid. So yeah. And that's why so many people, again, he, hopefully Olaf doesn't let the dragon go down. Oh, he is pinging it, the echo. Um, but yeah, in the hands, it's why I think Akali is known as like a not a problem champion, because the average player who's in silver has never played against a good Akali. Echo is doing the dragon, by the way, so this is very surprising that Olaf hasn't kind of sussed that out and he's not stopping it. Because yeah, this is being done. There's vision. They know he's doing it. Are you really letting him do it? Oh my god, I'm so weirded out by that. They had vision. Oh wait, no they didn't. Am I... Oh, wait, I might have made a mistake this game in the commentary. I might have not have put on this so they actually didn't have vision of the pit. My bad, everybody, my bad. Normally, I, I have that on, but I guess I forgot to do that. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Forget about it. So, yeah, they, they didn't know he was doing it, I guess. So, that is a mistake by Diamond Prox, I would say, because dragons should be the number one priority. But you also could say this Echo, it's weird. He's had a rough game, but he's now 105, so he's actually playing okay. He's recovering really well from the early start, and really well played by him to sneak that little dragon, when in, in reality, his team is behind 5,000 gold. There is no way his team should have got a dragon. He snuck it. Really good play by jungling, and that's another, by the way, important thing to learn. If you are someone that's going to want to jungle in preseason season 10, if you're behind as a jungler, getting those sneaky dragons is really good. Like, hats off if you do that because yeah that's a it's a comeback mechanic so remember that whichever team gets to the fourth dragon first gets the dragon soul of the match this dragon soul is the wind dragon soul can't remember what that does is it the i don't remember i think it's just movement speed out of combat which is obviously pretty nice for catching people um but yeah, like, it's a big buff for your team. Meanwhile, Carly goes down. Nice Oriana play. Um, it's a big buff for your team to get that Dragon Soul. And if you you can just sneak it when your team is behind in lanes. Amazing. Well done. The dra I've legit seen already in games that I've been watching personally, um, Dragon Souls turning a game for a team. Like, completely. They're behind, behind, behind. The That team gets the Dragon Soul. They suddenly start winning. What's happening here? <laughs> Why did Lucian wait that long to use his E? Alright, so he's waiting for a little uh, a pick. Don't think he'll get a kill, though. Oriana split pushing. Oriana's quite strong. Okay, there is vision. He used his E, the echo. That's actually a bad move. But there's a bunch of the enemy around. Olaf ults, obviously. He still takes damage, but can't get CC. Does get ignited, but doesn't die. Uh, Oriana doing a bit of damage. Akali in the area. Lucian, but sometimes the positioning a little bit weird. Um, it kind of looks like he's lagging, you know. Nice kill. All out. Uh, again, 0-8 Alistair. Not sure if he's auto-filled. It is a, a, a... Well, I thought that was Misfit. No, it is... 
a, a tagged player, but it might just be a random tag, not an actual team. Diamond Prox gets another kill, by the way, on the Akali, who went aggressive, I guess, on him. And he will then return to farming. So farm-wise, he's doing well. Could potentially have farmed even more this game, but he is farming more than the Echo. He's currently 5-1-5 versus a 1-1-5 Echo. So jungle performance, he's been involved in more kills. Uh, so right now, Olaf has a 50% kill participation. That is completely fine with current meta jungling. Um, and, you know, the the only big mistake to me that Diamond Prox has made is losing out the second dragon. That's it. Um, and, you know, this this replay is from the first couple days of the season. Obviously, and you can see Diamond Prox is pinging the dragons. He even, by the way, pinged, if, I, if my memory serves correct, he even pinged the Infernal Dragon somewhere, but, like, just didn't focus it, like, instantly. Um, but, yeah, even people like Diamond Prox, who, yeah, dragons have always been important, but they're now even more important. It's going to take a couple days to, like, in your head go, dragons, get the dragons. So, um, yeah. Some people, by the way, have said to me, I see it in the comments quite often, how do I get these replays? Again, nowhere special. It's in the League of Legends client. I think just so many people aren't aware of it. You just go on your profile, go in ranked, click the little drop down and go on top solo queue players. And then within that menu, I just right click on some of the best players on my server, EU West, and I look at their recent matches. I find a champion and a player that is good and a champion that I'm interested in. And Olaf is definitely one of them. I look at, you know, how did they do a little bit? I, you know, I obviously see if they win or lose, uh, but that's about it. And then you just download the replay on the client and you just play the replay on the actual client. And there's no third party website or anything. It's legitimate official League of Legends replays in the League of Legends client. Um, it, it does actually surprise me how little people know about that. Anyway, Olaf going to go for it. Is a little bit behind. Did go for maybe the wrong target at the beginning of the fight. Um, he is a bit hesitant here. I think he could have been much, much more aggressive there. Akali's flanking, though. Enemy team is now going to loop. It's 5v3, roughly. So a bit messy play by blue team. Uh, and also, that opens up the next dragon, which, again, is not good for blue team. So you can see this game is slowly being thrown. Uh, the second Rift Herald is up, so I wouldn't. I would be surprised if they don't just take that because you may as well. Nice kill by the Akali, who has died a lot, but is also getting a lot of kills. And you can see the spam pings on the dragon. The Alistair is like, we are doing dragon now. Um, so yeah, it, it's crazy how much that you need to prioritize. And they're not. So Olaf is up. Maokai's in the area. All the Maokai should be doing, creating a sapling fortress to make the enemy slow. There you go. Slow them down of going for the dragon to let Olaf get there. Let the Orianna get there. And then, yeah, now there's going to be potentially a brawl for the dragon. But there is vision of Akali. So at least blue team knows there's no Akali right now, which does give the, uh, the sorry, the, there's no red Akali, red team Akali. So they are just giving the dragon up. So that is a mistake by the Akali. That, again, that's someone to me, even though these challenger players, again, like we mentioned, they're very good players. But even players like this take a, a couple days at least to adapt. That Akali needs to realize how important it is to get these dragons. And uh, you shouldn't just let them for free get it for a top tier one tower. It's not worth it. Now the Rift Herald, second Rift Herald being taken. Uh, Olaf in the area. Build wise, by the way, standard build. Warrior into um, Warrior into Black Cleaver. And then I would imagine into... Um, what? Spirit Visage, maybe? It depends. Like, he can go a couple ways. Definitely Magic Resist is incredibly important against the enemy team comp. Kennen AP, Echo AP, Akali AP, Ezreal is hybrid. Obviously does AD damage, but also does AP. Alistair AP. So a lot of AP damage coming by the enemy team. So Magic Resist, very effective. You can see Maokai's first item, Abyssal Mask. Oh, it could be an Abyssal Mask as well, but for Olaf. That's true. So yeah, one of those two items for Olaf. Spirit or Abyssal. It actually probably is Abyssal, if I'm honest. Uh, Lucian potentially getting caught by himself in the mid lane does get comboed will go down don't know why he's there by himself rift Herald being used also remember rift Herald now is only a 1.5 second cast time not used to be a three second cast time so it, it's harder to get it cancelled i guess um i don't know why they did that but i guess because there's two of them and it's kind of half the power of the old one again people haven't sometimes also realized because i had someone in my twitch chat the other day I think when I was like, oh, Rift Herald sucks now. They were like, it doesn't suck. There's two of them. It's like, yeah, it got nerfed really hard and towers got buffed. So like, legit, if you get a Rift Herald at the, the first Rift Herald in t and you use it straight away, you're getting just over one plate of a tower. 
it sucks. Like, it, top lane is in such a bad place right now. And so many people, like, even I was like, oh, dude, two Rift Terrells. That's pretty legit. That'll help top lane. And then no one expected, oh, you're buffing the early tower and then you're nerfing the Rift Herald itself. So it doesn't really matter at all. It, it, it's not worth leaving lane to go get Rift Herald. The, that's a jungler thing, not a top lane thing. So yeah, top lane is in a bad spot. Like, I've left top lane already. Even, God, wicked. A Worlds semi, uh, semi-finalist in Worlds has left top lane for now. That's when you know top lane is in a very bad place. So, and it, again, it was naturally going to be when the whole con when the whole game is now pivoting on dragons, the other side of the map to top, and you're nerfing the Rift Herald. Yeah, there's two of them, but as I said, you're nerfing them overall. <clears throat> it was always going to be a bad thing for top. Oh, that cancelled. Uh, worth also noting that... Oh, cancel B got a reset. Um, look at the AD carry difference. So again, I don't know if this is because Echo is just that weak now with Conqueror, or is it... Um, meanwhile, Olaf's fighting over here to the side, which they will pick up the kill. Nice kill. Uh, or is it, I don't know if this person just isn't an AD carry player. I've got no idea. Um, but yeah, there's a very, very big difference of AD carries. 100 farm difference in 21 minutes. Uh, Baron is being pinged. Obviously, Baron is still good. Um, but really now again in League of Legends, uh, I'd like to think in the history, uh, Lucian makes a mistake and that stops the Baron. So that's a big mistake by Lucian, actually. Um, I'd like to think in League of Legends, the big crazy plays that we've known throughout the years have a lot of them have been pivoted around Baron. Massive Baron team fights and stuff. Baron swings, a Baron steal. With upcoming uh, LCS and Worlds and LCK and or, or LPL, all the different regions, I really do think dragons are going to be much big, much big, much bigger. Uh, because it's more opportunities. Like, think of each dragon now as important as basically Baron in a way. And that's what we've got. So it's going to be really important. There's going to be crazy fights happening. You'll have top laners teleporting down for dragons in the early game. I think that's pretty good for competitive play. I don't necessarily think it's good for solo queue. Because that just to me, like me just saying that sounds messy in solo queue. In coordinated team play, yeah, that sounds really good. Coordinated play, high rating players, like pros. Sounds really clean and clinical. In solo queue, where you've got an autofill top lane or an autofill jungler, that just sounds like a nightmare. Um, so you can see again the Alistair pinging the dragon, Diamond Prox pinging the dragon. So again, very much the priority. Furthermore, we've seen it again. The Akali, it just hasn't clicked with this Akali yet. I don't think that she can't be split pushing when dragons coming up. It's costing her team way too much. So Echo going to be going down. Very early ultimate by Olaf, but just doesn't want to get rooted or stunned at all. Uh, Kali now making it into the fight, but this is clearly a win. Bad ultimate by Orianna. Clearly a win for blue team. Akali will get a kill in the end, but most likely will go down. Does have a second ultimate potentially, but never mind. Does go down. Triple kill for Olaf. 925. Dragon coming up, I presume, now. They should... Well, either they're going to go Baron because there's no threat of the enemy team getting Dragon. And uh, yeah, they can do Baron kind of for free. Maybe. I don't know. It, it depends how confident the Kedden is. He doesn't have Zonya for some reason, so maybe he won't go in. Eh, there's something potentially on. So uh, the Ezra is kind of weak, but I I'm not sure about this Baron, man. They're doing it so slow. Like, they can do it, but there's going to be a Kennen with ultimate coming into the pit. And this was Diamond Prox pinging this, by the way. I think this was completely the wrong call. Oh, kill the Ezreal. What the hell is that Ezreal doing? Yeah, he's not great, is he? Now, oh my god, holy moly. Two big mistakes, so I do not know what that Ezreal was doing. He literally eed into the pit when he didn't have flash up. That was just very weird. Maybe he expected the Kennen to go in at the same time with his ultimate, maybe. But in no world was that a good idea. With these d kills, by the way, now it's going to be Baron. I would predict. Uh, especially if they could kill the Echo, because then there's not a smite steal potential, and Echo is actually somehow a level up on the Olaf. How the hell has that happened? The Echo... How the hell? So yeah, Echo is a level up on Olaf right now. Even though the Olaf has got 13 kills. He, they're now equal in level. But he was like double the kills ahead in farm. And the Olaf's got more objectives. I have no idea how that guy got ahead. Orianna, by the way, teleported to go to the dragon. I think she was stopping someone taking the dragon maybe. Which is good. Olaf ults. Just for that bonus attack speed, I guess. Akali, nice. Shut down. Now it's 50-50. I would not want to continue that because Akali's burst damage is probably higher than yours. This is crazy. Here we go. Baron is still helping out. Oh, 
Lucian returning for the Baron. Who's going to get it? Oh, Carly got it, dude. I said you don't want to do it with a Carly around. Her damage is higher than yours in burst. So, red team get the Baron. <laughs> this game. This is a great game. And now the, but now the dragon's being pinged. But yeah, Baron Steel. Very messy. Brilliant. Again, challenger game. Uh, Olaf will be spawning in five seconds. Teleport's coming in just to secure the dragon. You can see Echo was looking for it. Does get potentially picked here. Doesn't even get an opportunity to ultimate. Wow. I would like actually to know how many stacks of Dark Harvesters Echo has. I can't imagine he's got many. I'd probably presume like six or seven at 25 minutes. Again, I just don't think Dark Harvest is a good thing to run in the jungle anymore, really. Like, unless you're playing, like, Karthus, which not many people play Karthus anymore. Like, I haven't seen a Karthus jungle in months. Uh, especially now that you it's all about dragon priority. Karthus can't take dragon. So, I don't know. Alright, potentially a pick. Oh, Olaf flashes ults just to go for this Kennen. Remember, Kennen has, for some reason, not rushed or got... Zonya really early, so he is very susceptible to die early. His damage will be high, but he'll also die a lot, you know, pretty quick himself. Um, 1v1 Lucian on the Akali. Wow, that's impressive. And without, by the way, heal. So I don't really know how he did that. So worth also mentioning, Lucian's got Conqueror. Conqueror hasn't technically got nerfed. It's got changed. So it got nerfed in the aspect that it's not the tank killing rune anymore that gives 15, I think, percent true damage on tanks, which was really good. Um, or to 50% tree damage, which hurt tanks a lot. That was obviously fantastic. So it doesn't have that, but it gives you so much more healing and it gives you more adaptive damage. So if you're an AD champion, it will give you more AD. If you're an AP champion, it will give you more AP. So it's actually been buffed in terms of its damage output for non-true damage and it got buffed for healing. So overall, it's actually pretty good. It's really good on AD carries. It's good on, let's say, Draven would probably take that. It's actually still not bad for stuff like Darius, although I also have heard Aftershock Darius is actually kind of busted because Aftershock got buffed with um, resistances. So uh, yeah, Olaf will go down because this, by the way, Diamond Prox is very squishy. He is starting to build tanky now, but he is quite squishy. They do, by the way, get two inhibs, so it's worth the ace, honestly. Um, normally you don't want to obviously die, but I've always said, you know, some deaths in League are good deaths. That was a good death. You get double inhib. All you got to do now as a team is walk top lane with the pressure of double inhib, and there's not a whole lot what I would imagine red team can do. Their wave clear isn't that good. So, yeah. Uh, next dragon, by the way, would give the soul to blue team, I believe. They're on three right now because they had one stolen. Um, and then remember the way that it works, the next dragon, let's say blue team gets it, that means they get four dragons. They get the Cloud Dragon Soul. And that also then makes the next dragon be Elder Dragon. Um, if, if by the way, um, remember... What are you, that's weird positioning by Lucian. Does play it not bad, though. Ooh, wow, he played that really well at the end. Um, Alistair, I guess, has just given up because he knows he's not going to kill him. But, um... Wow, that Lucian, it was weird. He, like, went next to an Akali, which I was like, you don't want to go next to an Akali. And then he completely outplayed her. Fair enough. So, enemy team's kind of fallen apart. I'd expect the game actually might be over pretty soon. Because that, you know, them dying there is very demoralizing. You've lost two inhibs. Echo is now split pushing bot lane for some reason by himself. And now the, the top lane is subject to being opened with the pressure of the inhibs. You're not coming back from this, are you? Like, let's be real. Um, so, yeah. Really good game, though, for Olaf. Um, it has made me kind of like, what I wanted from this is just to see if Olaf is in a good place. And obviously, the level one did help. But yeah, Olaf, I think, is pretty good. His dueling capability is awesome. He's good, obviously, against CC, which CC is very prevalent in the game right now because the return of tanks uh, is coming back. So Olaf is good versus tanks because tanks usually bring CC. Um, he's tanky. He's good at dragons. His jungle pressure isn't bad in any way. So I, I do think he's actually a legitimate pick. If you are looking to pick up new junglers in preseason, I would recommend Olaf. Uh, I will most likely play a game of him in the next couple days. Double kill for Orianna. Echo flashes to get the stun, but then doesn't do any return damage instantly, which makes Lucian survive. And that will be the game's so overall. Pretty good game. It was lovely to watch Diamond Prox do well. 14-4-7. Only big mistake that I'd say, well, there was a couple, but yeah, if they didn't get the dragon, they, if they got the second dragon, they would have had the dragon soul by the end of the game, um, which obviously would help. Anyway, that's going to be it. If you guys did enjoy, throw a like on it, throw a subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.